Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, lovely students? I hope you are enjoying your good health. This is Pakistan International School Atayibs virtual learning class for grade six for the subject science. Dear students, we are on chapter number five: atoms, molecules, mixtures, and compounds, and our today's topic is compounds and mixtures. So let's review from the previous topic that we have studied that everything which is around us that is made up of matter. And matter is made up of atoms. This matter is divided into two different substances. Number one, pure substance. And number two, mixture. In the previous topic, we have just talked about this pure substance and its kind uh, that is an element. We have seen different types of elements. Those are metals and non-metals their properties and their uses as well so if you see here that if any substance or any matter is having the same kind of atoms so that makes an element so today we will see about compounds and this type of other matter that is mixture so right now we are gonna see that matter here if you see uh, uh, in uh, the compound when the different types of atoms or elements are combined in a specific ratio in with a force in a specific manner that makes a compound so if we see here the second type of matter in the mixture it is also having homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture and in homogeneous mixture look all different types of compounds or substances mixed in the same uh, uh, like same way and here if we see the matters uh, that uh, in that uh, heterogeneous mixture, we are having different substances. Some settle down, some are big, some are compound, some are elements. So they uh, form the different layers in that mixture. So right now we will see detail of compound. So if we see that compounds, so when two or more elements combine chemically in a fixed ratio the compound is formed so for example water is the compound made of elements hydrogen and oxygen we know that hydrogen and oxygen h and o both are both are um, combined but in specific manner chemically in a fixed ratio that is called water like always always whether the water uh, or hydrogen or oxygen which is combined to form water it is in the formula h2o like two atoms of hydrogen and one item of oxygen will just chemically combined that's why it is always whether the water is of um, canal sea river drinking water or what type of water it is its formula is h2o so it means when the water combined uh, sorry it is made so hydrogen will be of two atoms and oxygen is having one atom in it almost 109 
known elements are there as we have seen before but there are thousands of compounds because they combine in different ways so number two that in compounds if we see in, in this example hydrogen and oxygen are gases they are colorless gases they are having no smell and no taste hydrogen burn very quickly in oxygen so when they burn both of these gases combine to form water as a compound but water is we can see it even it is tasteless but sometimes when we drink water just we can assume that this is water we can taste it so as well as uh, both of the gases they form uh, another substance a new substance that is liquid in structure so in compounds the chemical properties or physical properties of the elements which are present in that that uh, that are changed so there are some other examples table salt plastic wood clothes they all are the examples of uh, everyday compounds if we see in brief a compound is a substance that is made from two or more different elements that have been chemically joined they join chemically if you see this one this one this is sugar salt in a solid state this is actually sorry salt and this is its a normal like state this is its a solid state and if you see its chemical structure so it is having um sodium and chloride ions so if you see uh, so sodium and chloride and sodium this blue one because it is smaller element and chloride is a big element so this is called n a c l and a c l c or c is capital here so if you see common example water table salt table sugar and chalk etc chalk uh, for writing on the blackboard so it is having this kind of formula so calcium carbon and oxygen these are three different elements which combine chemically and here carbon hydrogen and oxygen they combine chemically so if you see here chlorine is combined with nitrogen and then they form the bonds this this line is called the force of attraction or the bonds by which they form these type of compounds so the substance made when atoms form two or more elements combine uh, uh, chemically so if you see this element it is combined with this one and with this one and with this one so here is a like chain of different type of atoms which combine chemically by this force of attraction that is called bonding so a compound is formed so if you see here are uh, the atoms we can say uh, different atoms carbon nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen so they can combine differently so they can form different compounds like with oxygen we can form no nitrogen oxide and we can form because this one is oxygen so here oxygen is combined with uh, two hydrogen so it will form water here two oxygens are combined with nitrogen so it is nitrogen dioxide because nitrogen is one and two oxygens are there if we see here oxygen so here is one carbon inside it and um, around it they, uh, it is having a two oxygen atom so that is carbon dioxide the gas which we exhale so with the help of oxygen we can make four different compounds here but there are lots of other compounds which we can form by only one oxygen atom so with 109 elements we can make thousands of chemicals 
Yes, if we see here how is compound formed, so here we are taking the example of water. So you can see here in this image that this is oxygen atom and this is hydrogen atom. So first one hydrogen atom is combined chemically with this one. Oxygen is having one electron, uh, sorry, hydrogen is having one electron and oxygen in outside is, is having two, two and two, six electrons. So it needs two more electrons. Um, so one, it comes from this hydrogen and then it will uh, combine, collect, uh, com combine with another oxygen, uh, sorry, hydrogen atom to form H2, uh, H2 and O, O in the center and around that uh, there are two hydrogen atoms. So these smaller which are moving in their orbits, that is, the, these all are electrons. So like this, by the force of attraction uh, of the electrons, so what uh, happened, the compound is formed. Yes, our next um, link regarding with this topic, that is a mixtures. Mixture actually is the combination of more, two or more uh, substances when they mix, but not chemical change. There will be no chemical change, no bonding between them, no combination um, of the, those uh, chemicals and no, uh, like uh, we cannot make uh, a new thing from that. So parts of a mixture can be separated easily, but in compounds, they cannot be separated easily. From water, you know, water is a compound. So can we separate hydrogen from oxygen easily? When it boils, when it becomes steam, it just maintains its shape. So oh, from ice to water, water to boiling water, then to the steam, it just remains water H2O. It does not split into oxygen and hydrogen normally. They can be divided chemically by some certain uh, uh, conditions which we give them, but not easily. So, but mixtures can be separated easily because they are not chemically combined. They do not make bond uh, among themselves. So you can see here examples of lots of buttons here, lots of uh, like nuts and bolts and uh, nails uh, tools are here. And here is an example of salad. Uh, so there are tomato, cucumber, lettuce, and lots of other things are there. So we can see everything individually here and we can pick out our um, favorite thing from the salad. It means um, like it can just change into its original uh, like form we can choose and we can select and we can separate the components of them. But in a compound, we cannot separate. As well as all parts of mixtures keep their own properties. For example, if you see, just taste from this salad, this tomato, so it is having its own taste, cucumber is having its own taste. So every part of this uh, mixture is having its own properties. So, <clears throat> And uh, we will see uh, later on about uh, two different types of uh, mixtures, a homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture, and what is the difference between. We see in brief that a mixture is made up of two or more substances. Yes, we have seen before that mingled together, but not chemically combined. They are not chemically combined, but they mixed up. Like we are having example of crude oil. This is crude oil, which we get from directly from underground. And then we clean it, we just separate them, uh, certain ingredients from them, and uh, we can get uh, just uh, pure oil or diesel or petrol. Seawater, yes, and air, all are mixtures, how they are mixtures, or oh, we will see them later on. 
So if we see here some other examples of mixtures, so you can see here is a mixture of some solid particles um, as well as into the uh, like some solid particles and into this one oil and some vinegar if we just put into the vinegar and some these things pickle like uh, structure or um, uh, that is present that we can uh, say that for dressing of salad um, that uh, is used uh, for just giving the flavor to aroma and um, it is used for the dressing of the salads so that is uh, used for that so you can see every particle is uh, separated and uh, you can see uh, the big particles as well as the separate layer of oil inside it as well as we are having another example of mixture that is lemon squash for that uh, we need um, this one lemon squash we need a uh, water lemon juice as well as salt sometimes sugar and uh, whatever you need so mix it uh, simply and that it becomes mixture so that does not combine uh, chemically and that does not uh, uh, produce or form a new uh, thing, but it is a mixture of all these things. If we see here uh, types of mixtures now, so we will see there are two types of mixtures. One is heterogeneous mixture and the other one is homogeneous mixture. Hetero. Hetero means different. So genus means its form. So if the mixture, in the mixture, it is having uh, different structures or different forms in it, and every form is uh, separated or it seems uh, differently. So this is called heterogeneous mixture. So it can, <clears throat> we can see the different parts of the mixture in that. That's why it is called heterogeneous, like different. Liquids are unstable and will uh, settle down if we mix like this. So uh, sometimes like uh, leaven we are having. So uh, what have uh, happened um, just uh, which is like heavy particles settle down and uh, you got just settle down and water just leaves up uh, on the surface so like layers in the liquid the layers of different substances are formed as you see here um, oil and water does not mix you can see the separate layers of that in pizza we can have like different uh, uh, toppings and dressing on it so we can see different and we can taste them differently uh, now we can see the homogeneous mixtures in homogeneous mixture homo means same genus means a form so in this uh, mixture all the form of the substance is the same they are not different if you see the examples also they cannot see different parts of the mixtures and they are also called solutions uh, because the thing is properly dissolved in one another liquids are stable and typically won't uh, settle out or settle down so um, they are in this uh, the liquids are uh, just uh, stable and they don't make the layers of this so one example is alloy if we see here alloy um, that is bronze as uh, we have seen uh, previously in metals and non-metals so that in, when we melt them they become liquid and uh, metals uh, after melting we just combine them to make an alloy so these are the coins which are made by bronze and that is the example of homogeneous mixture so we see salt in the water so when we dissolve salt in the water so we cannot salt separately from the water so it is also a homogeneous mixture okay here we can see some other um, examples of homogeneous mixture so you cannot distinguish the components so what type of components is present in that in homogeneous mixture but we can distinguish all the components so you can see the example of salad fruit salad 
and the pasta, milk and cereal, and chickpea salad as well. And here, if you see, there is puree or smoothie, and uh, coffee, milkshake. We cannot uh, separate, like, or we cannot see even or distinguish the different components of these substances. This is orange juice, uh, cold tomato soup, and chocolate as well. These are all homogeneous mixtures. If we see comparison of compounds and mixture, uh, so then you can see properly the differences of them. So if you see compounds com combine chemically forming molecules, but mixtures not chemically combined, number one. They form, compounds form bonds, but mixtures don't form the bonds. That's why uh, combine in set proportion so, as many electrons they need so they combine with the other element or other atom but here there is no uh, chemically bonding so no uh, prop uh, no proportion of any uh, thing in solid you can increase or decrease the substances according to the choice here we cannot have the choice separated chemically they are they can be separated but chemically as they have made bonds before so we have to break down those bonds but in special circumstances in specific circumstances conditions in the lab as well but here in the mixtures we can separate it physically uh, like we uh, just pick out our uh, choice um, the fruits as well in the fruit salad and like that we can just uh, uh, this is easier for us to separate them out so here you can see the clear difference by the picture that this is uh, the compound like two different uh, atoms combine together and here if you see different atoms or we can see uh, different substances are present some are smaller larger and having different shapes in it so they are mixtures and they are having variable compositions means um, numbers and structures are different and in compounds they have to be uh, combined with definite composition now we will see some uses of compounds uh, dear students here we see first of all uh, the uses of uh, compounds then we'll see uses of uh, mixtures as well if we see water we know that that is the universal solvent as well as the universal compound because it is the need of every living organism for different purposes and for living as well so if we see here so it is used in homes, industries, agriculture, lots, lot, like for growing crops as well. And without water, life is impossible. We know this. Number two, very important compound is carbon dioxide, in which carbon is one and two oxygen. So here, oxygen is called oxide, and there are two oxygens, so that is called dioxide. Di means two. That is the gas which we exhale and plants use this carbon dioxide as um, like an ingredient to make its food. We know that. We have just studied that in photosynthesis. It's very important use uh, which is for the plants as well. That is urea fertilizers, means urea formation urea or fertilizers we have just talked that about in uh, non-metals as well that urea or fertilizers it is used for plants to grow them properly if you see here uh, it is uh, just uh, the urea or that fertilizers is beaded like white or the colored structure which is given to the plants and later on waters the plant and it, uh, this urea is dissolved in the water and the plants take them because in this uh, structure, in this fertilizer, we are having nutrition for the plants to grow well. As well as carbon dioxide is used in breads. 
and we make soda bottles for them also. So if we see, you can see this rising bread here. You can see the bread is rising uh, in the oven. So this rising of bread, that is due to the carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide is produced when we use yeast in it. If you know, lots of uh, students, I know, uh, they knew about um, the pizza recipe or bread recipe that we use the yeast in it and that yeast produces carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide makes the bread or bread, uh, bread fluffy and that fluffiness just leaves the holes like this into the bread as well as this is used in a soda bottle also so carbon dioxide like whatever pepsi cola and what type of uh, fizzy drinks you use in which when we open that fizz sound uh, just comes out that is called fizzy drinks or soda bottle so in that we use carbon dioxide also so that uh, fizz sound is due to the release of carbon dioxide so next is a very important chemical which we use chemical or the compound um, which we use at home that is sodium chloride that is also called table salt sodium that is written as n a as we have seen before and c l n a for natrium or natrium is the latin name of sodium and c l for chloride sodium chloride and that is common table salt which the salt which we use at home why it is called table salt because it is uh, just kept on the table to use on the uh, food so here that is made up of sodium and chlorine elements sodium is solid and chlorine is gas but when they uh, combine chemically they form sodium chloride in solid form so people use them to preserve a fish and pickles as well if you see a uh, fish and uh, pickles this is a uh, pickle cucumber pickle which is you uh, like made by um, vinegar as well as we use salt to preserve them like to keep them for a longer period of time so we add it to food to make it salty as well and that is used to make or manufacture casting soda caustic soda and washing soda Caustic soda is uh, used to drain or cleaning um, uh, the toilets, washrooms, and the floors, etc. And a washing soda is used for washing purposes. Now we'll see some uses of mixtures. So if we see here, sherbet, sherbet is like uh, uh, lemonade like uh, different type of squashes fruit squashes that is a mixture of sugar how the sherbet is formed like this is a recipe of that also sugar water table salt and lemon that is also called lemonade so that all the things which we have seen before in an example so they are all combined and they form sherbet or that is a mixture and that is uh, very good for health as well and uh, for, from a sun stock, heat stock, sun burner like that in summer especially. And they also give us vitamin C which uh, boosts uh, boost up our immune system. We use it in the hot summer days. So number two is the salad. Very, very healthy, tasty, and whatever vegetable fruit you want to there is fruit uh, salad uh, vegetable salad and like that whatever you want to add in that onion carrot radish beet cucumber tomato cabbage that is up to you so the cutting and just combination of these they are called mixture now ice cream that is also yes the mixture of sugar in the milk and we add some flavor vanilla strawberry chocolate whatever it is so that is also a mixture mm, yummy and amazing uh, for summer season so milk a complete nutrition diet 
and uh, like a complete diet for uh, the infants as well. So it is having water, fats, proteins, carbohydrates. Actually, we don't make them. Nature has just missed all the things and just uh, milk is um, just prepared by these things. So it means they all are um, uh, what we can say the mixture because when we boil it we can have a little layer of uh, fats on that so it means there is uh, we can um, make some uh, cheese from that that uh, just uh, uh, it seems to be uh, like a mixture the next last but not the least that is tincture of iodine that is also a tincture of iodine that is iodine in liquid form and alcohol in liquid form so this is the mixture of iodine and alcohol and uh, you know if there is cut or wound we, you go to hospital so doctors use this for cleaning the germs from and that wound so these are all uh, the uses of compounds and mixture for our daily purposes and definitely we are getting benefit of them but we don't know if you see this uh, red cylinder that is present everywhere in the buildings schools hospitals in the cars like um, in every type of vehicle uh, homes and like that this is filled with carbon dioxide Mm, to just put off the fire this is tincture of iodine which we use for um, cleaning the uh, wounds so uh, if we know um, very uh, like uh, big and the largest world's mixture that is what C yes C because it covers 70 percent of our surface but it is the mixture of water and sodium chloride means a salt as well as not only sodium chloride salt but there is potassium chloride and uh, other salts uh, are mixed with the seawater that's why that is called uh, the largest mixture of the world so um, it, it seems to be clean, but it is not actually. It is having different salts in it. So that's why, uh, in, especially in Saudi Arabia, just they treat and refine, uh, uh, we can say the clean this water and uh, uh, just clean this water for drinking purposes and for other purposes and just uh, uh, remove salts from this water very big example where we live in on the earth there is a big part uh, over by which we can inhale and exhale and we can live that is air air is also the mixture of gases if you see mixture of gases so almost in this mixture of gases we are having lots of gases like oxygen o3 that is also oxygen but that is ozone nitrogen carbon dioxide that is compound water is compound but when they do not combine chemically separately they are uh, just present around the atmosphere of the earth so that is mixture that distributes the heat and enables life to exist on the earth so that mixture of gases that makes a layer which is very important for the survival of all living organisms here some other gases helium are also present argon are also present we have discussed in the first lecture of this chapter that there are some noble gases argon helium and some other gases are also present in very minor amount oxygen which we inhale that is almost 21 percent and nitrogen is 78 percent so some water vapors and particles of dust and smoke are also present. Pollen grains are always present in the atmosphere, bacteria and all the things which we inhale. So they are all make the mixtures. So if we see that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that is almost 0 0.03, 0 0.03 to 0.04 percent in the atmosphere, but it is gonna uh, change 
and due to the presence, uh, due to the burning of coal, due to the uh, industrialization, smoke of the vehicles and uh, etc. and uh, wood, coal and oil burning, carbon dioxide is produced. But by nature, it is going to be removed and it is going to be constant for um, decades. So that is due to the photosynthesis, like because plants take in ox uh, carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. But due to pollution, what is going to happen? Uh, pl uh, plants are cutting down, so carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to increase. So in the previous century, 100 years, a uh, one degree temperature has been raised. So that is a huge difference, which by which what happened glaciers are melting and we are having flooding like conditions and our atmosphere becomes hotter okay dear students i hope that uh, uh, that all information in this lecture helps you a lot and you got good information about uh, mixtures and compounds and their uses <clears throat> Wish you all the best, inshallah. We will see you in the next lecture.